And the trading foreign exchange on margin carries a high level of risk and may not be suitable for all investors. The high degree of leverage can work against you as well as for you. Before deciding to invest in foreign exchange, you should carefully consider your investment objective, level of experience, and risk appetite. The possibility exists that you could sustain a loss of some or all of your initial investment, and therefore you should not invest money that you cannot afford to lose. You should be aware of all the risks associated with the foreign exchange trading and seek advice from an independent financial advisor if you have any doubts. This is a live trading room is for educational purposes only. No financial advice will be or no financial advice or recommendations will be provided. Any trade taken during this live session is not a recommendation or suggestion that you should do the same. Past performance is not indicative of future results and do not trade money you cannot afford to lose. Before trading live, always operate with a written trade plan that, uh, that identifies rules for entries, exit targets, and risk management. Now we got that out of the way. <clears throat> Welcome everybody. It's gonna be a slow, uh, looks like it's gonna be a small group tonight. So I'm going to allow anybody to talk that wants to talk and uh, we'll get started here. Let me share my screen. And the last alert that we had was a US CAD and um, I'll be get that started here. And here we are. <clears throat> uh, this was the uh, US CAD. It started at, oh, let's see, it was at uh, 9.15 this evening. And right now, I would say this, the evening trades I do not normally take because they're usually generated pretty slow Sometimes they work out, but a lot of times they take several hours to materialize to where they actually start uh, breaking out of the uh, the wedge. But we had, but we'll start with this one. <clears throat> and uh, this was at 9.15, or 9 uh, 9.15 this evening. It was an ascending wedge. And what I did was I drew the wedge from the ascending, starting with the A down below, found a B, which is a pretty much a pivot area or a, uh, in this case, I pretty much just flatlined the BD area. And because we have a, this is the 62 moving average sitting right here at the top of where the wedge was. And th this is gonna cause some problems. So I don't expect this thing to go too high and you're only looking at only a couple of pips till we get to that bounce area of the 62 moving average. <clears throat> so this is not a trade that I would take. This is the way I would draw it. I draw it with the, um, uh, I come over here where we have some at a nice little drop base. There's a little flat line right across from the B. And I'm just pretty much taking the pivot high, which is from the previous high before the daily close. And it's right now it's looking at pretty much, uh, I can take it up to the, where the alert was. Uh, usually I try and take it to the candle before the alert. But in this case, uh, since this candle is already closed, I'll just take it on up there. There was a red candle, pretty much flat lines the top. And now we're looking at possibly a breakout at the bottom. Uh, I would not take this thing long because we have too much resistance up there at the top with this 62 moving average coming down. If we look at our five minute charts, we have these, uh, on the five minute chart, we have the 62 exponential moving average down below. All the moving averages are in the right direction <clears throat> on the five minute and uh, also on the one minute. But again, like I said, we have this area up here that I just don't want to take it long. And everything's pretty flat on here with the RS RCS tools. And so therefore there's not really much, uh, not much movement. Not, there's no reason to take this trade that, that I see. Possibly if it breaks out of the bottom where our ABAC uh, lines are, if we get a breakout at the top up here, then we could maybe look into see a zone that may give us an opportunity to see a close uh, below this area right in here where the A to C is. I'll draw a box from my A to the C. And I'd like to see a close somewhere in this box, before, break the trend, break the wedge, 
come down here, close inside of this to go further short. So right now there's really no trade here. And we'll just uh, see what we have elsewhere. So right now there's nothing here. <clears throat> there was another alert on the Euro US at nine o'clock. I've got that drawn out here. Here's the nine o'clock uh, close. It was a descending, it was, it was an ascending wedge. Uh, here we go. Ascend, yep, it was ascending. And so again, I'm going to start with my A down here at the bottom. And pretty much flatline. We have an anchor. Here's a hit. <clears throat> There's another uh, hit before the wedge alert. And uh, I'm going to go for the previous pivot high. Here's a low. Here's a lower high. This is pretty much a flat line bottom with the hit. And now if it comes and enters in this area and closes in beside, in between where these blue candles are here, if we can get a close inside here, we may possibly be able to go up and be able to take a trade up to this area, which is at 1831. <clears throat> That's a couple, about 20 pips to the upside, and that has some potential. But uh, again, this time of year, this time of day, it's uh, pretty quiet, and I usually don't like taking trades much before 9, 9.30 at, uh, in the evening. And like I said, a lot of times they won't really materialize until sometime in the middle of the night. <clears throat> I have everybody's mic uh, available to uh, speak, so if you have any questions, just uh, give me a uh, give me a call and uh, open your mic and ask questions and uh, see what we can come up with. See if we can answer some, make some clarity to some of this stuff. So, oh. <laughs> I have been in Euro USD. Since day, um, I'm not sure if it has been favorable. Uh, I'm sorry, say that again. So I have been in Euro USD. Oh, I'm actually in profits now. Um, let me double check. Euro USD. I bought Euro USD today. Uh, One point one eight zero five nine zero five. So you got down here at the bottom, down here. At it, yeah, pretty much where the I area. didn't even realize it's gone up. Uh, what was? Uh, I guess I have to ask. When did you get in, and what was your criteria for getting in? Um, normally, um, so I've been using signals right from my broker and also from, from the news, but I also Oop, I lost your, I lost your mic. Yeah, he just cut out, eh? Oh, hey Matt, how you doing tonight? Hi, sorry, had to finish putting the kids to bed. That's okay. It's uh, I think it's gonna be a rather quiet night tonight. There's uh, a couple of alerts, but they're not. They don't look like they're gonna be going anywhere. So, if you have anything to uh, add to the discussion, it's uh, uh, one thing about with this room is that we're pretty much working strictly with the uh, when we get the alerts, and we try to show how we play the alerts. Uh, if you got into a trade uh, based on some other criteria, uh, I'm not sure I'm of uh, the uh, ability to be able to comment on whether that was a good place to get in or not. One thing about it is, is that when you start looking at taking trades after the market closed, which in this case is at five o'clock, and then it reopens again about, uh, usually about a half hour later, the time period between the market close and uh, you can see where it really took almost from five o'clock to, uh, 
pretty much 815, there really wasn't much movement at all. We're only talking a, a few pips. So usually what we try to do is we wait to see where we get some movement in the market. And then we have, we get the alert, then we draw the wedges and wait for the breakout. But we try and do it in an area where we look like we may have some possibility to be able to make some profit. Uh, this one is, um, there just isn't a lot of room from to this area for this breakout. It, it, right now, if it broke out right there, we got a, a five minute close outside the wedge. The first close was at 1814. And till we get to this area in here, which is pretty much at the, this would probably be the top of the inch of the uh, area where you're gonna start finding some uh, some resistance. You're only looking at a couple pips and there's just not enough room to take this trade. I mean, the, other, some... the other thing to that also is Euro USD doesn't move overnight. Right, so, this, is, this is not the best time to be trading the Euro USD. Uh, it's actually one of the only pairs that I probably would never take a trade after after like four o'clock in the afternoon, you know, um, until about 4 a.m. So yeah, that, it, it could, yeah, cause basically this one trades best during the London U.S. market. So that's when the European markets are opening up in the U.S. market. Uh, this time of night is not a good time. The U.S. Swiss, sometimes you'll see a trade. Uh, not very often do, does that pan out until the middle of the night, usually for East Coast time, looking probably two, three o'clock in the morning, you might see it start. You may get the alert, but it, it just goes sideways in a very narrow range for several hours before it actually breaks out of the uh, uh, the uh, the zone that you we would be uh, drawing. Yeah, uh, the only uh, the only other side to that is the uh, AUD USD USD uh, JPY and uh, whatnot but other than that uh there's uh, i don't really while i was working but now is not uh i haven't been really focused on that i've been spending a lot of my time uh trading in the early mornings and getting it over with right and that's the unfortunate part about this time of the evening is that you usually don't get a lot of good trades. But we can, what we can do is we can show you the methodology that we use uh, to enter the trades, how to exit the trades, and uh, what we're using. Uh, and that's pretty much what the uh, the main focus of this uh, session tonight is going to be, is to uh, show you how we enter trades and how we uh, uh, what our criteria is. Uh, but for like this time of night, you're looking at mostly the, the Asian and the um, uh, the Sydney pairs. Uh, basically, the uh, for the Sydney market that opens up, you're looking at the New Zealand and the uh, Australian dollar, and then later on with the uh, the uh, Japanese yen. So, having said all that, uh, let me go to some of our alerts we had earlier this morning and see if we can show some, uh, there was one here, the Aussie, here's an Aussie USD at 7.30 tonight. Let's take a look at that one, see if there's anything there that might be worthwhile. So I'm gonna go over to the Aussie USD. And we're gonna be looking at our 15 minute chart. <clears throat> and that was at 7.30, ascending. So I'm going to go to my 15 minute chart, 7.30, put a vertical line on. It was ascending. So I'm looking at, I'm looking at this pivot high, I'm looking at this pivot low, and trying to find three points, an anchor, a medium hit, and another hit before the trend line. So I'm going to start with my triangle tool. It was ascending, so I'm going to start with my A down below. Going to go up to the pivot high, come up to the next pivot low, come up to the next uh, lower pivot high. And you can see that um, we have a little bit of a violation right in this area. 
Now, the fact that this candle is already closed, I can take this over to that the close of the 50 minute candle where the alert was, was generated. And I'm gonna come over here and see if I can find an area that looks like it could use this as an anchor. There's a hit, there's a near hit, and then here's the anchor. And then we're looking at the break. Now this one's pretty much already played out, but we can see how we were drawing this thing. So we start on a 15 minute chart. Here's the, the alert, anchor, hit. There's a third hit. And here's an anchor, here's a hit. Now the, the fact we don't, we don't have the third hit, this D would be over here someplace. And so what I'll do is I'll just try to bring this over here to align this with the top of this as being the medium hit. And if this thing would have come up to test it, then that would have given us an idea or it would have broken out the top. Right now we have the breakout of the bottom. I would be still looking at, uh, go to my five minute chart and try to fine tune these areas. And you can see where we had, this was the, um, let's see, where's my A? My A is over here. I can bring that down a little bit closer. There's a nice little hit. There's the third third point. <clears throat> and you can see where it started breaking it right here. I would be using this, this point and this point to draw a area where I wanna see it close inside this, this zone. I can get this thing to turn on. There it goes. And I'm going to bring this one up to where I have the a hit. Here's the I C. Bring this to the top, and I want to see a close inside this area. And you can see once it broke the wedge. Oh, sorry. This is going to work out. Not this. This was a 7:30. It broke the wedge. Came down here. It it didn't close inside the wedge, and it came back up and retested the the trend line. On the second uh, when it actually closed right in here. So this is the area where I would probably take in the trade. Now again, this is time of the day that I do not normally trade because it, you just don't have the volatility that you need oftentimes to get what you want. I'll use this as a potential where this has been where I probably would have taken the buy under normal, and say so again, normally what we trade, we trade in the London to US uh, sessions. Oops, from one, one country to sell. So this has been the candle that I've been looking at off of this five minute chart. And I'll see where it looks like on a one minute chart. And you can see actually, I mean, with the one minute chart, you can see actually we did have a close on the one minute, um, that which is pretty much at the same spot where we got the close on the five minute. You have had a little bit of a retracement from 72, 73 to 72.81. You probably would have gotten stopped out off of this move. With this move, when you got the close on the five minute chart, which was over here, you would have had plenty of room and you would have had, it wouldn't have even challenged your stop at all. And with this trade, it would have been from 74 to 62. You have got, been able to get your seven pips off of this trade. Right now, this one's pretty much done as far as the, uh, from where the alert was. Any questions about that methodology? Quiet group tonight. Yeah, Matt, no. do you have, Matt, do you have anything to add to this? Uh, right now, not a whole lot. I mean, uh, it's it's literally just that. Like the, uh, I I do want to mention exactly what you were saying uh, before uh, when when the gentleman was speaking uh, that 
we try not to deviate too much from outside of the the wedge alerts. We'll sometimes talk about other things, but they they all kind of drill down to the idea of wedge alerts um, just to just to stay focused. Uh, I I'm just trying to figure out. Um, Yeah, I, th I think the thing is, there's a, there's an awful lot of different ways of trading. Uh, like I said this room is pretty much geared on the uh, the iris alerts. When we get the alert, and we show how we trade the alerts. Uh, there's a lot of other methods out there that they all work. Uh, some work, some don't. Uh, when we do talk about in this room, we pretty much try to keep uh, keep focused on uh, the alerts, how we trade them, how we draw the wedges how we draw the triangles and trend lines. And uh, so if, if you have some other entries or some other trades that you take, uh, that's pretty much on you uh, because uh, it, it, we, we try to keep a methodology that we know works and uh, we try not to mix different methodologies uh, with that. Um, I say this 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 time of night is a little bit difficult because we don't usually have a lot of good signals. What we could do is we'll go back here we'll replay one of the ones we had earlier this morning, which was uh, we had one here at it was the uh, Australian dollar. This was a good one. This we had this one. It was an A cent wedge on the Australian dollar at seven o'clock this morning. So let me go back to seven o'clock this morning. You know, my 15 minute chart. We'll come all the way back here at seven o'clock on the 9th. And we'll do a replay on this one just so you can see kind of what we did. This one worked out uh, really nicely. It took a little while for it to develop, but it did work out very nicely. So I'm on a, I'm going to start with a five minute chart. I'm going to do a replay on this. Starting at uh, seven o'clock. And I believe this was an ascending wedge. Here's where the wedge alert came in. And we uh, want to draw the, uh, it was ascending, so we're going to start down, down low. And so start here, it, there's my A. I'm going to put my B up here to the next pivot high. Here's a, that's a lower high. Here's a higher low the lower high, and this is, here's the wedge. I can probably uh, tweak that down to, actually that's probably pretty good right there. You can see that the moving averages, one thing about the moving averages on this particular case is that we had the five minute 62 moving average, which is below the wedge. So if it did break, break the wedge, it's probably gonna come down and retest this area right in here. So there's not a lot of room if it breaks, I'm not gonna be real anxious to take this on the breakout uh, because of where that uh, 62 moving average is. If we go to a one minute chart. We're gonna tuck this in a little bit closer. I'm gonna check, tuck this one in a little bit closer here. And we can see that we had nice strong move coming down Tuck that in. So here's our anchor, here's our midpoint. And then somewhere over here, we're gonna find another, we'll probably get another hit. But we got, we can't ignore the fact that we had this strong move down over there here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a secondary wedge. This is gonna come over from this pivot high, this high right here, draw that right across and draw another secondary wedge in here. Bring it right up to this. And we'll tuck this in right along here. And I'm gonna change the color of this to make it yellow. And we're gonna see what happens when this thing breaks. So right now we're on a one minute chart. We're just do this candle by candle and see where it goes. There is the break. But remember we had a on the on the five minute chart. 
we had this we had this down here. So I'm going to mark this with a. Actually, I think this one may have been at 6:45 this morning. This is a five minutes sixty-two. Let me double check this here, because there was one at six forty-five. That's the U.S. Swiss. Yeah, this was seven ascending. Okay, we make sure we got the right one here. So the fact we had this break and we don't really have a good clear zone here because we know once it breaks if, if we're going to get a bounce off of this 62 it probably didn't give us enough room to really take the trade it's only looking at two pips difference from where the price is right now let's go back to our one minute chart oops i might have to go to that five minute we have to do this one five minute because of the replay action here but it did break and um, there we go. That's I like that better. Here we go. So I'm not going to take this trade short because there just isn't that much room between the uh, where the B was. We don't have our third hit. Uh, what's actually going to happen is they're going to be able to take the slide this one over to where that closed on the, off of that candle. Line this up with the trend line. And let's see where it goes with the next candle here. Whoops, what happened here? I just lost everything. Yeah, let me stop this and start this over again. It was seven o'clock this morning. Here we go. There we go. And that's tonight. Bear with me for a second while I figure out where I'm at here. September 9th at 7 o'clock. There it is, okay. To the replay, let's try this again. Okay, here we go. So we have, we drew our wedge, put it on a five minute chart. We have our Five minutes sixty-two over here, and we're looking to see if it's going to break. How it's going to break out of this this area? Let me see if I can get on the one-minute chart on this thing. Doesn't like the one-minute chart. Okay, I guess we'll have to do it on the one on the five-minute. All right, so we have the main wedge. We have our Anchor down here. Here's our midpoint. Here's where the alert was. And we'll see which way this thing's going to go. There's the break. Came back up, back into the wedge. And here's where the breakout started happening. And what we're looking at, let's see if I can get this one in one minute. I just won't do it. Oh, let me do it. We had the break on the on the upper time frame, and this was our basically where our target would have been. We had this nice nice drop here. We had all these red candles coming down, made a pivot hot pivot low. Let's take this one off here. 
Here is where the end of the candle for the wedge alert was. Just wicked down, came back up, and we had the secondary wedge was right in this area right in here. Once it broke through the top of this, we we're looking for it to possibly head on up to this area up in here. So I'm going to mark that. This is the this is the series of red candles, but you see there's, there's no wick on this one. It came right down, came down, it closed, no wick at all, came right back down. So this is the area that I'm looking at for as a potential target from the, um, this is at the 7235 area to 7237. Not a lot of room in that. This is still the main wedge that we're looking at. I would expect to see this thing come up here and challenge this area right in here. So base inside, came back down, retested this area. This area still holds. And I'm looking to see, a I want to see a close below this area. So I'm going to draw this line over here. Uh, let's see, we we'll go with, this is really the area that I'm looking to see a, a close in between here. Once it closes in this area, this would be the next target area down below. Next candle, came up, wicked up in here. And you can see where right now it's still inside the wedge. Big drop, again, it came down on well, this five minute candle, came down into this zone, could not close in below it. I think it was right around eight o'clock or so when this thing started breaking down. 7.55, yep, here we go, so got to close in below. And this would be the next area that we're looking at for a target. And again, you see how much we have here. We only have a few pips. This was not a great trade here. Came up, retest the wedge. And this is where the breakout started happening, right up here. It came up here to the where the BD area. And we had, and what I'll do is I'll draw this line, I want to see it close. I don't have time getting, grabbing this thing. There we go. I'd like to see it close between this area. I want to see it close inside this, this area between the, with the low of the D and the, and the B. If I get a close, because that would be a higher close. And then, so this is where I'm looking at a enter to close inside this area here. It breaks through the wedge, closes, and then see where it goes from that. We got the close, actually on a one minute chart, we've had that close in here, and then it just took off to the upside. And that, that was the trade right there. Any questions? Quiet group. Matt, do you want to add anything? Uh, just... Uh... I wish I could have gotten this on the one minute try. That would have been helpful. There it is. No, I'm pretty, uh, I'm pretty quiet tonight. Yeah. I'm, uh, pretty quiet. So actually, uh, Razan, you probably have, uh, you have any more questions? I, I see you posted something. You said, I may have not been trading long enough, but it's the first time I see AU and GU going in opposite directions. So I don't know how to really, I don't know if I 
have I actually noticed that before, or if there's some kind of inverse correlation. I never really paid attention to that all too much. Does anybody have any pairs that they would like to look at tonight? Yeah, how about that? Type it in the chat and Let's see, I'm training long enough. Whoop. What happened to the question? Yeah. Razan, you got, uh, you, you had mentioned GU, AU. Okay, let's look, take a, let's take a look at, let me get rid of this uh, replay. And let's just see what our, Let's see what kind of pairs we might have. That might be something that now the, all the pairs that we get alerts on are all U.S. based pairs. So we would be looking at something that's you know, like a Swiss U.S. or Aussie U.S. something like that. Now, like right now, I'm looking at the higher time frames where the euro is right now. The euro seems to be the stronger on all four time frames. So uh, let's take a look at the euro U.S. Um, Again, this is not the prime time to be trading this, but we did have an alert. Let's start clean on this one. And we're gonna to go to our 15 minute chart. We did have a Euro US alert. Well, here's, uh, let's see wait, wait, what we got here. The US CAD, there's a, uh, let's see where the US CAD is here. U.S. CAD is right, they're kind of right neck and neck, so there's really no divergence there. Not, you know, that's, uh, they're kind of in the middle of the pack, and that would not be a good choice. Euro U.S., so let's just go with Euro U.S. here at 9 o'clock. And that was a ascending wedge, so we're going to be looking at starting low to high at 9 o'clock. And there's nine o'clock or it's an ascending wedge. So, I mean, again, here is the daybreak and there's not a whole lot of movement in between. So I'm still gonna be looking at primarily the day before, this was uh, you know, basically September 9th's price range. Here's a pivot high, here's a pivot low. And you can see where there's not a lot of, once after about 12 o'clock today, there was very little movement on this thing. It says just as important to know what traits not to take as this traits what to take. And this was, uh, so I'm going to be looking at, uh, there's a high, here's the low before the daybreak. It maintained a certain low and now it's going up to retest that. So this is where my wedge is going to be. So I'm going to look at this uh, series of lows right here, take it up to the pivot high, come back down to the low before the wedge. And then we're going to take it to where the wedge was. So this is the area that we're looking at. I'm going to make this uh, with a higher time frame. Make that orange. Come over here to my five-minute chart. Try and tweak this a little bit. Try and get all these. Try and get the absolute low here, the low here. Pivot high. And we've got this high right he here. Go to a one minute chart. I'm going to take this over, tuck that in. Going to tuck this in a little bit closer. And we can see that we have the, our A is here. Here's our middle hit. So here's the anchor, here's the hit. And here's the, uh, the third hit where it came off to bounce off of it. So this is a this validates this trend line. With our B area, strong pivot high. And I just look at this. This was a big rejection. It came all the way up here, and this is just a real whipsaw right here. Uh, Twenty nine to thirty four. But this this wick is is a five pip wick, but it's still significant. So I'm going to mark that. 
as a reference. House Mark has a target here for it for right now. So the fact that it breaks the wedge, came up here. Now this right here with this one minute chart, you can see where it had a little bit lower high and then this was still lower than the D. So I'm going to allow myself to tuck this in over here. That gives us our other hit on here. So we have the anchor, we have the hit, we have the third third hit. And now we have the break of the trend line. But what I'm looking at, I'd be looking at doing this with a, where my D is, where I have my, where my medium hit is here to where the D is, at the top of the D. And if I get a close between this area where the mid hit and then the third hit, and now we, got, we have the trend line now, if we get a close inside this blue zone, which we did right in this area, that would be able to take the trade. Now, the question is, do you have enough room to the upside to be able to justify taking that trade? And so you're gonna measure it from say the D to this area. That's 23 pips, so there's enough room to the upside and there's really nothing in between where the D is and where the A is, because that's this was the top of the A. We also want to see where the pivot area was. So this was just a wick. So I'm going to take another clone here. And I'm going to bring this down to the top of where the body of the candles are. This is my new zone for my supply zone. So if this thing comes up, it could this would be my target area up in this area. I'm just going to make that, uh, we'll make this our supply zone. We had the break. And so right now it's following these trend lines right here. Here's the 64. But again, there's not a lot of volume from the break here to here. Probably only a few pips. 1821 to... This whole move off of uh, from here to this is 1812. We had the break. We wouldn't want to get in until we got in the middle here. So from 1814 to 1821, you could have basically barely gotten your seven pips. You probably would have gotten maybe five pips out of it. And it's starting to trend. All of our moving averages are in the correct direction. We have the green, the yellow, and the orange on the 15 minute. Let's see what, I get that on the five minute here. We have the green, yellow, and magenta. So basically all the moving averages in the right direction is coming back, it's retesting the yellow uh, 13 moving average. All of our moving averages are in the correct direction to go on the upside. So if you did take this trade in this zone, you'd still be okay. You'd still be well within your seven pip stop range or 10 pip stop. A lot of times I like taking the stop, keeping it on the other side of the, where the wedge is, or at the very least on the other side of where the moving average, the 62 moving average is. So if we had taken the trade in this area, where we had the close, which is off of this blue candle. That was the close on this candle right there. If that was the entry, And we have our seven pips. Our stop would be down here. Our target's still gonna be way up in here. And you just barely off of this candle right here is where the entry was. You would just, you probably wouldn't have gotten filled with your seven pips because you would have needed your spread. Your spread is uh, 1.6 on the spread. So here we are. Any other questions? There's really not much going on tonight. So unless we have some questions, we may cut this a little bit short tonight. I think so. I, I, I think it, it might just be, uh, 
ending it a little early, and then we'll get a good start tomorrow morning and take over the charts. Racine, do you have any questions at all? Type something in the chat. I didn't see nothing, so. Well, I'll tell you what, we're going to. We're going to cut this thing short tonight. There's, there aren't any alerts. There's nothing really to show. No questions. Uh, there's no point in continuing this. And uh, Kind of stretching it longer than we really have to, you know? We'll, uh, yeah, there's no point going to, uh, to 11 o'clock tonight if we're not getting anything uh, to show and nothing to really do. So. I think that's fine, Al. Yeah. So, okay, we're going to call this, uh, we're going to cut this short tonight. And um, since there's no questions, and uh, we're just going to see everybody in the morning. All right. Take care, guys. Have, have a good night. All right. Bye.